the, sh the show on the on the pier, the contemporary show, on the right. 44, pier 44. I, think it's I thought it was very point. weak. No. Oh, well, it's yeah, it was not exciting no, at all. I want to hear this again. <laughs> this Omni show is really it's, it's so huge now. It's hard to yeah. remember what it is anymore. But it's it's, big, it's two piers. It's like pier 92 and then. Yeah, I thought Pier 92 was, uh, in a strange way, more interesting than Pier 94. Definitely. But I think it was because the work, as I was saying earlier, um, it's been pre-filtered. This work has stood the test of time. Right. Yes. So everything has had to, like, it's 20, 30, 40, 50 years old. Right. If we even know who these people are, it's because it's passed through the filter. I can, I can Even the also ran people have passed through the filter. They may not have made the first cut, but they're very interesting artists for the second cut. But if you look at, if you take the, it was in 94, mm -hmm. the contemporary yeah. thing. I was just talking to Irving Sandler, the great art historian who's seen everything from the beginning of, uh, of uh, abstract expressionism to now. I said, I have a feeling that the work on Pier 94, how much, how much of that work will Not 20, 30, 40 years from now still be seen? And he said the same thing, the same percentage I said, which was 5%. Yes, true. Okay. And it's not that that's because the work now is any less interesting than the other period, but it's always been only 5%. Right. It's always been 5% of the work passes from the, uh, the vertical to the horizontal from our time to all time, uh, or at least to the next 50 years of all time. So sure. it's, it's not surprising that that's... And, and then there are behind the curtains, some artists that still needs to get a revival. Absolutely. But the, be the best thing for me about the modern peer, uh, 92, mm -hmm. was we all know who made the first cut. You know, to Kooning and Rothko yeah. and Pollock and whatever. But there's so many interesting people, one or two, layers below, who were very interested in the time, sort of fell through the cracks, disappeared for a while, yeah. and now we're looking at them again, and, but they're, it's not surprising that their work is interesting. Needs to be discovered. Needs to yeah. be or re reassessed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that was what the fun part was of going through the pier, mm -hmm. deciding, you know, like for instance, Norman Bloom, who's been absolutely can, you know, sent to the dustbin of history. Yeah. There were so many Norman Blooms in this show, uh, hard to believe, and, uh, and so many other, uh, Conrad Machiavelli, whatever, people who were very interesting in the 60s, and now they're looking interesting in the yeah. yeah. You know, the funny thing is the idea of distinguishing the modern from the contemporary. Initially, I thought that was like a gimmick, and I said, oh, come on. And then I said, why don't you just do one show? It would have been interesting to mix them together. Yeah, but then, but then, no, actually, it's a good idea, actually. No. And if you go to the Park Avenue uh, armory Arm show, that, there they are mixed together. Yeah. Um, I think if I, if, as an artist, I always wanted to be seen with artists of other generations and see how my work you know, stacked up. In the old days, when I was in the Whitney Annuals and the Whitney Biennials, in which they had several hundred artists, all one work each. I loved hanging next to Frank Stella or de Kooning sure, or whatever. Sure. I learned so much about my own work, about how it stacked up, and it was exciting. I hung next to my heroes. Now, if you look at the Whitney Biennial, um, very few artists, huge amount of space for each artist, mm -hmm. and they, they, it's a, an emerging artist ghetto. Yeah, you don't have a way to look at this work no in relation to... One artists. thing, to the defense of, of the, the curators, I think it's better that they have more than one work. You can see, you know, 
when you get the substance of cloth it, rather than just one piece. Same thing at the art fairs. I liked Volta the best because each stand had a one-man exhibition. Mm -hmm. well, that's a where you man. can get well, a more overview of, of what the artist is well, doing. Well, I'll tell you from an artist's point of view, the great thing about the old annuals and minus, first of all, I got more artists on this show, and we all wanted to be in the show. And then, there may have only been one work per person, but you got to see yourself next to people that you otherwise would never see yourself next to. That's what and, and they really that, that was really instructive, and it was thrilling. I feel bad for these young artists who are only, only seen amongst other young artists. They don't know how, how they would stack up against... When, when did that change, actually? Uh, started in the late 70s, it changed. The only artist of my generation that I ever, or my generation or older, that I ever see in galleries routinely is Alex Katz. Um, I don't understand why people of my age don't want to know what's going on. If I were a writer, I'd want to read novels written by young novelists today. Why, why don't people my age want to see what young and emerging uh, artists are doing? And I always go to all the art fairs and whatever. I think they don't like what's going on. <laughs> they feel like, yeah, really, I think they feel that their issues have been supplanted. Do you think, by, it's, by do the, you think they are intimidated by the I younger think generation? They, don't, they think these are the young bucks and young buckets, I guess, <laughs> have, uh, you know, are like uh, out to get them, out to take their place in the art world. I, I really do. Look. Do I like everything that's going on? No. Do I? Am I glad I came up when I did? When the issues were different? Of course. But you, yeah. know, you know what I I find uh, intuitively for me when I see most of the stuff. To be honest, I, I realize it's not very interesting. That's right. But it was all most of the stuff was always never very interesting. Well, it's like panning for gold, you know. And that's yeah. the fun of it, because you, you're gonna. If everything was interesting, it wouldn't be that great either. You know? Right. I mean you.